our final speaker of the morning, uh, uh, patient uh, advocate extraordinaire, uh, and uh, uh, he will be focusing on uh, something which is tremendously important is, yes, you want to be in remission, but you want to maximize the quality of life uh, along the way, which is what it's all about. So, so welcome, Yalak. Uh, as always, we look forward to your lively uh, presentation. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dury. Uh, <clears throat> this particular slide is uh, a reminder that uh, March is Myeloma Action Month, and if you go to the mom.myeloma.org website, uh, you will see a lot of actions you can take on a daily basis uh, to increase your quality of life while living uh, with, with multiple myeloma. Uh, thank you uh, to all the doctors and Dana for the excellent presentation. If we were in Boca in person, I would have asked the audience to clap uh, for you. So we'll plan to do that uh, next year. Uh, my presentation is going to be less technical and touch the softer side of living with myeloma and uh, treatment for myeloma. Uh, this past Christmas was my 25th Christmas since my myeloma diagnosis. Uh, for me, Christmas is always bittersweet. Uh, it was right after Christmas in 1995 uh, when I was told I have myeloma and I was given two to three years to live. At that time, I was 25 years old. I was recently married. I just finished my undergraduate school and had started going to graduate school and studying computer science. And the diagnosis of myeloma did change uh, mine and my family's life trajectory. I vividly remember my first day of chemo. This was pre-novel therapies, uh, and it was a real chemo, uh, being Kristen, adriamycin, and Dex at that time. And uh, all my immediate family, including my parents who were visiting at that time, were crammed in a small chemo room at Medical City in Dallas. Uh, I actually remember the room 272. Everyone was waiting for me to start throwing up immediately and lose my hair right, in, right there and then. We have watched too much TV leading to my first uh, chemotherapy. Uh, the anti nausea medicines worked for me. Uh, I don't remember throwing up through my treatment, but I did lose my hair. Uh, this one actually is natural, uh, but the, at that time I did lose my hair uh, because of the chemotherapy. And the four days on and four days off, uh, if you remember, uh, of steroids, and extended period uh, in front of the fridge uh, gave me at that time the moon phase, uh, uh, chemo phase. Uh, but I tolerated the medicines well, uh, except fatigue, which seems to get worse from treatment to treatment. And I was able to carry my four days infusion of VAD and saline to class and sit at the back of uh, my class and not, not miss any class and uh, graduate uh, on schedule. Uh, at the end of the six months of high dose chemo cocktail at that time, I achieved uh, stringent complete remission. I opted out of doing uh, an autologous stem cell transplant and collected my stem cells, uh, which were frozen and stored for possible future use. I know I'm lucky uh, to continue to do well and live well with myeloma and not for myeloma now going 26 years. I'm thankful to my family, my friends, and the novel treatments that came along uh, and my exceptional doctors, nurses, extended care team who cared for me and continue to care for me. Uh, but I'm most thankful for uh, and recognize me standing on the shoulders of uh, my fellow myeloma patients and other advocates who came before me and uh, chose to bravely light the way uh, ahead of me. So what I plan to do in, in uh, 10 minutes or so is share uh, the hope and some tips and tricks that worked for me for the last uh, uh, 25 years. Uh, like most of you, I'd rather live without cancer. I'd rather live without myeloma. But if one has to be diagnosed with myeloma, I think this is the best time of all. Uh, uh, there are unprecedented amounts of options. There are new drugs or combination of drugs that seem to come up frequently compared to other cancers. And for me, having myeloma had enabled me uh, to have relationships I would not have imagined with patients, with doctors, with other caregivers, 
It has forced me to also become a lifelong learner. Uh, things change on, on a regular basis for myeloma, and uh, it really is important uh, to keep up. Uh, my story, like most of you, uh, has the beginning, the middle, and of course the end, which I hope is far down the line. Uh, the beginning is, you know, uh, when I was diagnosed, what my symptoms were, what type of myeloma I had, what are the risk factors uh, I had. And the middle is really interesting and more complex and different for each one of us. You know, what are the types of treatments that uh, I took? You know, for me, immunomodulators, the proteasome inhibitors, the molecular antibodies uh, and radiation treatment the side effects, uh, neuro neutropenia, uh, neuropathy, diarrhea, and the tests uh, I, uh, I took uh, along the way. Uh, I actually will go to this slide. And uh, one of the questions I get asked is how many relapse I had or how many, if this is my first relapse. Uh, if I'm counting, this is actually, uh, I have had five, relapses and remissions, but I have stopped looking at my myeloma survival in increments of reaching remission or relapse. I really want to measure how I am living with myeloma versus for myeloma. Because one thing I want to make sure is that I'm not forgetting to live while I'm fighting not to die. I think that is really important. And this slide shows there were a time that I was uh, on treatment or on maintenance. There were times where I was treatment-free and maintenance-free. Uh, there was times where I was on maintenance, soft maintenance, and 18 months later relapsed uh, and my myeloma progressed and I got back on treatment, went back to stability and, and so on, right? But one thing I want to highlight here, and I think as patients, we need to have a conversation with our myeloma specialists is uh, I'm a proponent of having a leading indicator of uh, my myeloma to show if a treatment is working or if progression is uh, starting and being able to act accordingly. For me, uh, the free life chain test and the PET CTs have been a great leading indicators of uh, how my myeloma is responding and how uh, uh, the outcomes are uh, coming up. One thing uh, I, I want to mention is that it is critical that myeloma, to know as myeloma patients, myeloma is not our fault. We don't know why we got myeloma. But no, we are not alone. There will be over 32,000 people in the US that will get myeloma this year. 88 people were told they had myeloma yesterday. In each and every day, 88 people will be told that they have myeloma and their lives will be changing uh, uh, forever. Uh, what we are attempting to do is not live forever as myeloma patients, right? Because each and every one of us at some point uh, will end up dying. Our goal as myeloma patients is to be able to maximize how long we live with myeloma while also maximizing our individually defined quality of life. Because my definition of quality of life is different than uh, somebody else's definition of uh, uh, quality of life. Uh, one of the common feelings we all encounter when we are initially told we have myeloma or when we have our first relapse or progression is fear. Fear of dying and leaving someone we love uh, uh, behind, uh, fear of the unknown, fear of what is to come, fear of the disease side effects, fear of the treatment side effects. The question I want us all to ask is, with our relationships with our loved ones, with our relationships uh, with the ones who care, our responses, our actions towards cancer, our relationships with God or whoever we end up living in, be any different if we actually conquer fear? Uh, what is it that we need to do so we don't forget to live while doing that, uh, what we can to avoid dying of myeloma, right? That is really the, the, one of the most important uh, uh, questions that we ask. And the physical aspect of it and the discussion that we have had today is important. But so is, in my opinion, the emotional and the mental and the spiritual aspect of it. 
to me, it is a triangle. You cannot have one without the other two uh, and being able to, to, to do that, right? Uh, you don't have to be spiritual or take care of your emotional being by yourself. It's okay to ask for help, enlist the help of a therapist or a spiritual leader. You can't fight all the battles that come your way. You should choose to fight the right battles for you. For example, you may feel tired. Rather than trying to power through it and feeling miserable, can you take a 15-minute break or nap and then power through it? Uh, one of the most important lessons for me in living with myeloma is the relationship I build, the relationship you build in myeloma world sometimes determine the outcome you are going to have. The relationship with your caregiver, the relationships with your myeloma specialist, and the relationships with other uh, uh, patients. But the most important one, in my opinion, is, is uh, developing the knowledge required to be a good patient. Uh, it could be you, it could be your spouse or your caregiver, or it could be your kids or somebody in your extended family. You need to educate yourself about what is myeloma, what is the quality of life you want, what are your options, and, all, and on and on. So I will build this slide and you, you guys should have this slide available. Uh, if your situation allows, one of the best advice I can give you is uh, to ensure the best outcome, you need a myeloma specialist. Uh, over time, you need to know your myeloma defining events. And uh, if we have time for q and I would like to ask you uh, uh, to ask the myeloma specialist, what is a myeloma defining event and how do I find out that for myself? Uh, as you'll find out, as you live longer and longer with myeloma, living with myeloma, in my opinion, is about finding the right balance, the balance between treatment and outcome, balance between outcome and side effect, balance between when to complain and tough it out, balance between drug effectiveness and drug affordability, and balance between the short term and, and the long term. So this concept of balance is really important, but so is uh, the, the treatment team that you end up building. Uh, this is a slide that shows some of the key specialists that need to be part of your care team. One of the most difficult thing to do but it needs to be done and consciously be decided is, is who is going to coordinate care in, in this uh, specialty. Uh, your caregiver is a really integral part of your survival team. It is important to have an open discussion with your caregiver of your, uh, uh, what help you as a patient do you need and are you able to receive as, as a patient? How much help is your caregiver able to give? What will you do during hospitalization? Uh, what, how do you avoid your caregiver or how does your caregiver avoid you during the days of DEX treatment, right? Uh, but we also talked about the, your myeloma expert is one of, if not the most important part of your care team. You need to decide though, what are the characteristics of a specialist you want, right? We have, uh, here, three myeloma specialists uh, uh, behind uh, that are answering questions. How do you choose between them? Uh, that is really a personal decision that you really need to make and is important in building the relationship with the myeloma specialists that, that, uh, uh, that you want to continue to have that relationship. As I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, myeloma Living with myeloma is a balancing act. Some of the questions I ask when considering a new treatment are, will I live longer if I take this treatment? Will I have a better quality of life if I am taking this treatment? Uh, how can my myeloma specialist help me personalize the, the, treatment, out, the treatment and the treatment outcomes and uh, do based on my risk factors, if I take this treatment or combination of treatments, Will I uh, relapse early or would I relapse late or is my relapse standard? Uh, can I have that conversation with my doctor uh, uh, even during this, this pandemic is really important. And uh, one of the things I think is, uh, that we need to decide as a care team is 
taking this treatment will if that will it prevent me from having uh, future treatments or close the door for me from having future treatments and uh, remember your doctor is your advisor your doctor knows about the science of your treatment but you know what your personal situations are how to articulate and communicate and maximize your quality of life and in my opinion at the end you make the decision based on many things with a strong advice from your myeloma specialist uh, as I mentioned earlier, living with myeloma requires achieving a fine balance between outcomes and side effects and quality of life, between treatment for now versus anticipating the future of uh, uh, both your personal outcome and what is in the pipeline, uh, and making sure that you are not closing the door uh, for future treatments. And also, I think it doesn't get talked a lot about in these medical meetings, but the cost and the value of treatment, right? is uh, being able to uh, balance that is important. Uh, I think what I want to leave you with is, uh, as we wrap up, is uh, we, as a myeloma patients, we don't get to ring the proverbial done treatment bell. I have seen many patients ring the bell in my cancer center. Uh, they finish their treatment and uh, uh, exit the door, hopefully for them for the last time. Uh, we don't get to do that, uh, at least not yet. But we need to learn to take the victory laps, as my cats used to say. We need to celebrate each and every win, each and every uh, uh, progress. Uh, if you can take only one message from today's talk, take this. While avoiding to die, don't forget to live. While avoiding to die, don't forget to live. Thank you, Dr. Lurie.